All right, so we know now how to obtain data from a user or from a file. We can also, with a little more knowledge and looking things up in documentation, get data from other sources. We also know how to do things like making decisions and writing loops and performing computations so that we can analyze the information that we've obtained. It turns out, though, that using things like lists and sets and dictionaries is slow in many cases. As an efficiency improvement for dealing with large numerical sets of data, there's a module that you can import into your Python code uh, to make use of what's called NumPy, the numerical Python library. And in particular, NumPy defines a data type called ND array, which is an n-dimensional array type. To use NumPy, what we do, well, okay, so NumPy is one of several important data analysis and manipulation modules that are available. I'm not going to read through this list for you. Um, there, are, there are other ones that you will encounter as you get further into Python. And in order to use a module, you need to import the module, as we've seen. We're going to use the same conventional abbreviations for NumPy that most people use. And in fact, if you look at books about Python, this is the conventional abbreviation that's pretty much always used, NP. We're also going to take a look at a couple of example plots uh, graphs of numerical information using a submodule called PyPlot of this thing called Matplotlib. Now, Matplot, Matplotlib, excuse me, is a is an enormous and strangely organized and confusing library for doing all kinds of uh, graphical uh, plotting of information from within Python. So let's start out by saying import numpy as np. There we go. And we're also going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. All right. And now we're going to create our very first ND array. We're going to start out with a one-dimensional ND array. You can create n-dimensional ND arrays, which is why the name of the data type is ND array. Let's contrast this with creating a list because there are similarities and differences in between lists and ND arrays. One thing about ND arrays is that they are very highly optimized in fact, the NumPy module is actually written in C. And so when you interact with NumPy, the code that you're executing from within NumPy is actually very fast C code. And it's particularly optimized to do vectorized operations on large arrays of values. All right. So, for example, if we want to create a list of a sequence of integers. <laughs> if I could type, it would help. We can use the list conversion from an iterable like range 5. All right, so now ls1 is a list of these five items. Each of these is a Python int value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Analogous to the, the, the uh, built-in range function in Python, the NumPy module has a function named arrange that constructs an ND array object from a range of integer values. So arrange5 gives me an ND array containing the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So casually, these look essentially the same at this point. The list is, of course, a list. And 
what it contains is Python int values. A1, on the other hand, this ND array is a NumPy ND array. Okay, so it's it looks sort of casually like a list. It's got a, this thing has a sequence of values in it. Each of these values is an integer, but it turns out that they are not the same as Python integers. Okay, the data type of each of the items in A1 is numpy.int32. Int32 is the standard size of integers used in C programs for the for the C language int data type and it has a more restricted range than the Python integer data type does. Python integers are arbitrary precision. Okay, Python integers can grow to be arbitrarily large. I can compute 1000 to the 1000th power with no problem using the Python ints, okay, it goes flying off the top of my screen. But if I access A1 sub zero and try to store into A1 sub zero the value 1000 to the 1000th power, it's too big, okay? It's too large to fit into a C language long. Now, don't worry about long. Um, long is just an alternate name in C programs for uh, most often a 32-bit integer. The values that will fit into a 32-bit integer are roughly between plus and minus 2 billion. All right, and so if I, if I say A1 sub 0 gets 2 billion, all right, two with nine zeros, that'll fit just fine. Okay, A1 now contains two billion as the sub-zero item, and then one, two, three, four. But if I say something much, something just a little bit bigger than two billion, uh, it's not going to work. Like two, three, okay, that's too large to fit as well. It turns out, in fact, that 2 to the 31 power is too big to fit. But 2, let's, let's confirm that. So if I try to say a0, a1 sub 0 gets 2 to the 31st power, that's just a hair too big to fit. If I say a sub 0 times or gets 2 to the... 31st power minus 1. Okay, so just one less than 2 to the 31st power. That does fit. So that is the largest value, 2 to the 31st power minus 1, that you can store into an ND array uh, in 32 value. Okay. Now, in the negative direction, you can store the negative of 2 to the 31st power. That's the largest magnitude negative number that will fit. If I try to store into n1 sub 0 the value minus 2 to the 31st power minus 1, okay, just a little, little, you know, one, one more negative than that, again, I get yelled at. So this is a sometimes a nuisance that you can only fit values into an ND array uh, of int values that are between roughly plus or minus 2 billion. Let me reset a1 sub 0 back to 0 so that a1 is in its original condition as when we created it. Okay, now an ND array is iterable. And so it can be used in all of the contexts 
where we can use iterables. That is, I can create a list from the ND array. I can create a tuple from the ND array. I can loop through the ND array and so forth. So any of the various contexts where I have used a list or a tuple or a set or a string as an iterable, I can also use an ND array as an iterable. In fact, I can go the other direction using pretty much any numeric iterable uh, to create an ND array. If I have a list, let's say M2 gets a list from range uh, 3 comma 7. All right, now 3 comma 7 means starting from item value sub 3 up to but not including item value sub 7. So M2 now contains 3, 4, 5, 6. Here I'm creating an ND array called A2 using the array construction or conversion function within the NP within the NumPy module, and I give M2 as my iterable, and now I have an ND array containing 3, 4, 5, 6. Here in A3, I'm using, rather than a list, I'm using a tuple, and I'm going to just manually type in this tuple. All right, so there's my tuple. This is a tuple of two floating point values. Uh, the value of pi out to five decimal places and the value of e out to five decimal places. And this also works fine. Now I have an array, an, an ND array, excuse me, containing two floating point values. These floating point values have the data type NumPy float64, as opposed to just plain old float. Now, fortunately, it turns out that float64 means a 64-bit floating point representation in memory, and it's exactly the same representation that Python uses by default. So, whereas ints, int values in an anti-array are restricted to this range plus or minus 2 billion, float values stored into a, a, a floating point version of an ND array can be moved back and forth between the ND array and a float variable in Python with no change. The, the sizes and ranges uh, and restrictions on the floating point data types between Python's built-in float type and ND arrays float64 are identical. Okay, now one restriction on ND arrays, which is not true on lists. Actually, I'm not sure I've shown you an example of this, but let me create, uh, oh, I don't know, M, M, M9. You can create a list of any items that you want. So here I have a list M9 containing an int, a float, a stir, a bool, the special value none, a tuple that happens to contain three ints, and then a set that contains a bool, a stir, and an int. So it's not necessary in the built-in list collection type in Python for the values to all have the same data type. However, in ND arrays, for efficiency, um, they must be the same data type. And if you specify an iterable whose data types are not identical, then NumPy will do what's called upcasting 
to convert all of the simpler data types into the more complicated uh, data type of the various data types that you've given. All right, let me try to make this a little more real. I think that was a fairly abstract thing to say. Here I'm creating the ND array A4 from np.array of this list. And this list has a mixture of int values. So 3 is an int, 4.5 is a float. So a mixture of int and float values. 5 is an int, 6.7 is a float. So when I pass that list to the np.array function, um, the np.array function analyzes that list and discovers, oh, wait a minute, these data types are not the same. So it asks itself, all right, which one of these is the most complicated data type? And double is more complicated in terms of how it's stored and formatted than int. So what Python will do, whoop, <laughs> what, what the array function will do is to convert these int values to the corresponding float values. And our resulting ND array has float, well, NumPy float 64 to be specific, uh, 3.0, 4.5, 5.0, and 6.7. Now the point zero, the zero part is not displayed here. That's just a formatting detail for the default way that NumPy displays 20 point values. If there's a trailing zero, it just isn't displayed. We know about uh, repetition and concatenation operations for lists. So here's my list ls1. If I say ls1 times gets to, that is a repetition. Uh, actually, the uh, on slide 12 here it says concatenation. That's actually incorrect. That should be repetition. Okay, so we're doing a repetition. And ls1 now contains 10 items, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, followed by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so the, the star operator for lists is repetition. I cannot say ls1 plus gets a single value. I get an error uh, telling me that this integer 1 here needs to be an iterable in order for that plus gets to, to work. It is possible for me to say ls1 plus gets a list containing a 1. That works fine. And that just adds 1 to the end of the list. The plus for lists is the concatenation operation. So if I say ls1 plus ls1, that's the same as saying ls1 times 2. I just get a copy of ls1 with another copy of ls1 appended onto the end of it. The ND array, on the other hand, treats star as actual multiplication and plus as vector-oriented addition. So the behavior is quite different for ND arrays. Here's our ND array A1. If I say A1 times gets 2, instead of repeating the contents of that array twice, I literally get that array multiplied, each of its items gets multiplied by 2. So this is like a scalar multiplication times a vector. If I say A1 plus gets 1, this is actually scalar addition it adds one to each item in the array. So when I display A1 now, I've got 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And A1 plus A1 is vector addition. So 2, 6, 10, 14, 18 is the result that I get there. OK, so that is a quick overview of how to create an ND array object and then some 
arithmetic operations that you can do on ND array objects, namely multiplying the vector times a scalar value, adding a scalar value to the vector, or adding two vectors together to get an ND array as a result. And you'll have a chance to play with that in this lab.